Hello everyone, it's CM Kozeman again and hello to everyone who's here because of All Tomorrows and because of the Alt Shift X video about All Tomorrows. It seems that, you know, my humble efforts at clawing a sort of niche for myself are slowly working out and I'm honored to say that now I have a fandom of sorts. So welcome to you too, uh, whoever you are, wherever you are. And today we're going to be talking about motivation for speculative world building projects. I was actually prompted to do this by uh, an emailer. Uh, his name is Nicolas. He wrote to me a couple of days ago. And, you know, I've been getting so much mail and God, I mean, thank you all so much. Every time I turn on the computer, there's a hundred messages or something. Amazing. You know, I would never have guessed. Seems that finally I'm becoming a little famous and, you know, with your help, I'll try to make this a lot famous, let's say. But knock on wood, you know, I'm very happy. Oh, by the way, before we begin, you know, if you can pitch in a dollar or two, to me at Patreon, you know, this newfangled sense of minor fame will even feel great for me. Through your meager contributions, they add up to a lot and they really help me out. So yeah, if you got time and a little cash to spare, please consider supporting me on Patreon. But anyways, here we go. A couple of days ago, this fan called Nicolas emailed me and he said, Hi there, I'd like to first thank you for the videos and the amazing content. Thank you, man. I'm a new fan from Brazil and I've been struggling with world building and creature creation for a couple of years now. And I've been suffering from motiv I've been suffering with motivation. So he says, long story short, I'd like to know what inspired you and kept you hyped for the All Tomorrows project. What were your hopes starting and have you reached them? By the way, he said, it might be a good idea for a video. And you know what? It was a heck of a good idea. So thank you, Nicolas. I mean, you might be surprised to know that when I was starting All Tomorrows, I had no idea of making a book or I didn't even consider that it would be this famous or even recognize. I just wanted to do a, a portfolio of strange post-human creatures. And I was inspired by the work of many people, actually. I mean, all artists, all good artists, I think, stand on the shoulders of giants. And I'm no exception. I mean, there are books like, you know, After Man by Dougal Dixon, a world of uh, a book of future evolution and there was another book actually two books by Olaf Staplidon Star Maker is one of them and Last and First Man is another and Olaf Staplidon I mean I have said this so much he's a great author and if you read his work you will see what a pale imitation of that All Tomorrows is so I just was hyped by reading these books and I just wanted to make a few strange post-human illustrations of my own. So I did, and to come up with a plot device, you know, because you don't really have natural consequences where people evolve on a higher gravity planet or whatever. So to come up with an excuse, I come up with the story about the Q enslaving people and making them into post-human abominations. And in order to have many worlds for them, I came up with this other story of these galaxy settling post-human people. So it kind of all evolved out of necessity. And I mean, I, I did not have any idea of making a book, but then the ideas and the artwork kind of kept coming together. And I said, you know what? I could, you know, make this into a book. So out it came. And I wrote All Tomorrows between 1999-ish and 2004 and I dusted it off in 2005 and published it and you know it languished for a while and I was kind of I almost rejected it I mean I, it felt like a cringe book remember I was always comparing myself to these great authors whose work I cannot match and also these great artists like Wayne Douglas Barlow so you know when I kind of grew older and 
made my website I didn't really include all tomorrows as a book I just wanted to be a PDF of interesting concepts and you know if anyone has fun while reading it all the better but I had no serious idea of like putting it out as yeah my work but then you know it over the last few years it slowly gained popularity and just this year it exploded so there thanks I mean I won't dwell on this any longer by the way I keep getting these questions you know, is All Tomorrow's going to be out as a real book? Can I buy it? And the answer to that is yes. But of course, since I cannot look at this book without cringing, I will have to rewrite it and re-illustrate it all over again. It's going to be like those Evangelion uh, re-upload movies. But when the book finally comes out, it's going to also have the old All Tomorrow's in it. So, you know, you can go back to your favorite concepts and kind of see how the work evolved but anyways enough enough teasers for now let's answer Nicola's question what keeps me motivated what should keep you motivated you know how can you make long-lasting world-building projects and actually I wrote an answer to Nicola's and it's not a very re revealing like fascinating answer but the only trick is to just keep plugging at it you know do something about your projects every day even if it means just a little sketch or just a few notes but every day drum up this kind of um, motivation and do something about it I mean at least have some concrete output you know it could be a few paragraphs a few sentences a little doodle doesn't matter so that's one part of the equation another part I think is to really like make it yours and don't try to fill in any boxes or make it book like or make it science fiction like i mean don't try to make your work match market expectations or anything because i mean the the professional science fiction writing market it's a buyer's market even i am not in it i mean i'm i so far don't have any deals with major publishers this might change but you know if i try to make it like you know science fiction you would see in the barnes and noble it would fail horribly because you know i would have to have drafts and word counts or other i didn't care about any of those i just put it out there you know bam 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 bish bash bosh just the trick was to the trick was to satisfy myself you know for the drawings or the artwork i mean this is for the standards of the time I was writing All Tomorrows, of course, this was for the standards of 1999 to 2005, but uh, I just wanted to, to satisfy me to the best of my abilities. If I didn't like something, I changed it. In fact, there's a lot of hidden or deleted works from the concept stages of All Tomorrows. And if you support me on Patreon, you can see them. But anyways, so I was only concerned with satisfying my own standards and working all the time i was transitioning from high school to college back then so it was kind of like an easygoing time for me in the sense that i didn't have to work for a living i didn't have to pay rent so that helped i had long like proper three month four month even long summer vacations in which i didn't do anything and if you're a student that's like the best time of your life and it's you're never gonna have anything like that so learn to use your time I and mean, my favorite moments were like you know, we would go on holiday to wherever I, mean, I at the first few summers i would tag along with my parents then sometimes i would be on my own but just have a sheaf of papers some drawing materials and just sit down at a cafe or a restaurant or just in the porch of your holiday house or just in your living room there's nothing like schoolwork or real life work badgering you and just write mm. in this day and age i think the computers and social media and smartphones really uh, destroy our attention span and like one of my life hacks is for example never to use a smartphone if you can believe it i just never started using the damn things and i'm i feel that i can devote more time to 
my tasks on hand so that helps so maybe if you're doing a work of your own i mean this is this can only be a suggestion you don't have to do it that way but only use physical media don't have a cell phone don't have a computer don't have nothing write on a piece of paper draw on a piece of paper if you're happy with what you wrote you can always type it up later and that's actually a really great way to write because then when you're writing that way you don't make as many spelling errors as you do on the computer it's it's funny but that's just uh, one of the weird ways the human mind works so there's one there's one if you're past the golden age of college and just high school and studying in general and if you're having to work for a living i mean then it becomes trickier to place your stakes on your own time but there are ways of doing it i mean if you have the weekends once again not using a computer really helps or you could go somewhere that's kind of like public but you're alone um, some of my favorite writing spots are like downtown cafes or restaurants but you know the not the high street kind of place but you know like uh, how should i explain this if you are in new york it would be a place in queens you know just a burger joint or a like real life coffee house or something like that like a living part of the town not a touristic not a center part of the town but just a part of town where people are hustling and going on with their lives you just go there sit down just do your thing have a cup of coffee have a burger just live life and work basking in the harmony of daily life i feel that's very motivating and you know then when you go back to work or when you go back home there will be something else to go back to and you could shift gears easier and just just be true to yourself just be honest to yourself you don't have to write the next all tomorrows the next all tomorrows will be your own book and heaven knows what we will call it but we're all excited to read it do your own thing come up with your own world building and also get your inspiration from real life and not from other works of science fiction i think science fiction in general has this uh, has somewhat fallen into this uh, mistake in that all science fiction writers look up to other science fiction writers but in fact life is far greater than fiction and fiction is far greater than science fiction and you know where i'm getting at i mean just just look, study history for example that's how i always say history has ten thousand more interesting i mean history is history is ten thousand times more interesting than science fiction then maybe use the templates or phenomena you are seeing in history or even stories about daily life and layer them over with uh, a kind of science fiction glaze or a post-human speculative glaze and make that world yours and just have fun keep at it you know there's a saying this makes sense in developing countries like mine but when you turn on the water first it comes out muddy then it clears out because the pipes are crap or whatever but the human mind's a bit like that so when you start working when you get into this work cycle you write fiction or create worlds only to satisfy yourself the first things to come out will always make you cringe when you go back to look at them but you know what that's okay that's how things evolve so let it evolve and try to keep doing it go through successive iterations and just just have fun that's all i could say anyways this has been a really short podcast i mean when i say short podcast usually my videos are an hour long but this is like 15 minutes but i hope you enjoyed it and i just wanted to use this excuse to answer nicola's email and i i know i get many questions like this one so i wanted to answer it uh, generally and also make an excuse to thank you all once more for your interest in all tomorrows thanks to you i have to write the damn book again but yeah thank you all and have a nice day this has been cm kozeman goodbye <laughs>